Now on the line is Tom Curran, a founder of Right to Die, and Tom is also a director of Exit International. Tom, welcome to the program. Thank you. Glad to be here. Okay, Tom. Uh, Tom, in Ireland, we have recently had a referendum on abortion passed, and a couple of years ago we passed a referendum on gay marriage. Is a referendum on the right to die in Ireland needed, in your opinion, or could the matter be dealt with in the Oireachtas? Uh, the matter could be dealt with in the Oireachtas. There's no constitutional change necessary, which there was in, in, in the, the, the abortion situation, uh, because that had been, the clause had been put into the Constitution and that had to be removed. But there's nothing in the Constitution. As the Supreme Court ruled in the Mary Fleming case, uh, that there is absolutely nothing to prevent the Oireachtas mm. from changing the law. Uh, so we don't need a referendum. But mm. I mean, if, to prove that the, the, the public are behind it, I suppose, maybe a referendum would be a good idea. Mm. Uh, John Halligan, the TD Minister for State from Waterford, has said in recent months or weeks that he's going to put down a bill in the Dáil, hasn't he? Could you tell me if your movement is is happy w w with what Deputy John Halligan has in mind for the issue? Uh, well, in fact, the, the bill that John is putting in is a very slightly modified bill that he put in before, which, in fact, I was instrumental in writing. Uh, mm -hmm. I put the bill together for John. Mm -hmm. so, uh, certainly, I am. I'm very supportive of the bill, even though there's a lot of things in it that, that I suppose are a bit short of what I would like. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's that's my own personal opinion. But yes, I'd be very supportive of John in putting the bill in. Um, am, am I right in saying that he he was talking about uh, the right to die would only be if someone has a terminal illness or something like that, whereas you are in favour of more like. Uh, on, on limited circumstances? Yes, I mean, the, 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 the bill that, that John is putting in, and, and the, as I say, the bill that I, I drafted with mm. his help, uh, it is really about the idea of, of a person with a terminal illness mm. deciding that, that they have had enough of the pain and, and discomfort and, and everything else that goes with terminal illness, that they've had enough of life from that point of view. Mm. Uh, as you say, the organisation that I'm involved in, Exit, has a more liberal view on, on who our view is that uh, any rational adult, mm. uh, and as I say, b both of those are very strong qualifications. The rational bit is very important because mm. a person has to understand the decision they're making, mm. and, and and also uh, an adult that they, that they have to have seen enough of life to to uh, to think that they that life isn't for them anymore. Mm. I understand that uh, euthanasia rights are in, in operation in some countries and around the world. Um, um, what kind of system is in place in these countries or states, do you know? Well, the, 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 this tends to be a bit confusing because people use the word euthanasia, hmm. uh, whereas that is not something that we advocate. Hmm. We advocate for either voluntary euthanasia or assisted suicide. Hmm. But in a, the, 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 the decision has to be with the person whose life is in, is in question. Hmm. Whereas with euthanasia, somebody else makes that decision without okay. necessarily the knowledge, the knowledge of the person who's dying at all. Hmm. Whereas we, we advocate that, that, that the, 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 the rights, it's a civil rights matter. It's not, not a medical matter. It's, it's a rights matter where the person can choose for themselves. Hmm. Now, if they're, if they're capable of, of taking their own life, the assistance in most cases is providing the means to do that, to do it very peacefully, hmm. as operates in places like Switzerland. But if they're incapable of it because of their, uh, the illness, Mm. As would have, as as is the case with an awful lot of people, because their mobility and their ability to do things for themselves disappears, and this is where a situation where the the, the medication or whatever you'd like to call it, the, the 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 means could be applied by somebody else, but only at the wishes of the person whose life is in question. Mm. So. Um... Voluntary euthanasia, uh, that's the term you use, is it? Yes, the terms yes. You use. Uh, it, it, it's in the Netherlands as well, isn't it? it, it it's, it's in the Netherlands. And, and for instance, the way it operates in, in Oregon is, mm. uh, Oregon, one of the states, and Washington in, in, in America, and now Canada. The way, the way it operates there is that the person themselves can make the decision. They make an application mm. to get a potion, to get, to get the, 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 the means, the chemical used to end their life from a doctor. Mm. The doctor prescribes that. But in the event of the person not being able to administer that medication themselves, mm. uh, then a, an application can be made to the court. Mm. And the court can then approve the doctor administering. Mm. And, and, and so it's, it's a second 
stage, if that's the way to put it. If the person is incapable of, of administering for themselves and the court approves that, then the doctor can administer the, the, medic, the, or the, the, the potion for the, the patient. So you're, ba- Exit International, and um, maybe right to die as well, you're basically in favour of all adults who, who, are, who have made a rational decision that, 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 that they want to assist the suicide should be able to, like, even if someone was, say, in their 20s or something like? Well, well what, what we advocate really is that, uh, I mean, there, there, to a great extent, there has to be a very good reason. And this is where mm. the rationality comes in, that uh, we, we have great difficulty where there are mental illnesses involved because we feel that a person is incapable of rational thought mm. in some cases. Now, I'm not saying that all mental illnesses mm. make people irrational, but in a lot of cases, and an awful lot of spontaneous situations occur because of circumstances around. Now, we don't support that, that at all. And, and personally, I think we, do, we as a state here in Ireland don't do enough to support people who are feeling suicidal because mm. of ex, ex pressures from society, such mm. as financial pressures or relationship pressures. We don't do nearly enough to support those people, and it's left to voluntary organizations. But, but in our case, we say, yes, that a rational adult, and I'll give you a very good example of it. I mean, I was in Switzerland recently, Basel, at the death of 104-year-old David Goodall. Mm. Now, who would question that at 104 years of age, a person is, incap- is, is incapable of saying, look, I've had enough of this. Mm. He saw his life because of age, not because of an illness. He saw his life was disappearing. The mm. things that he loved doing, like walking in the outback, uh, his eyesight was going, his mobility was going. And he said he just didn't want to sit around and wait for the inevitable. Hmm. So, so he travelled to Switzerland, and we arranged for him to travel to Switzerland, uh, to, to life circles in, in Basel. Hmm. And he ended his life there, but he was delighted to get that opportunity. Hmm. Now, I certainly couldn't argue against that, and that's the situation that I'm talking about. Hmm. Not necessarily that everybody <laughs> has to wait until 104 years of age, but anybody that's, that's thinking rationally, hmm. and that feels that, that life is now no longer for them, hmm. for whatever reason. I mean, the majority of people that we deal with are people with, with serious illnesses. Mm. Not necessarily terminal, but, but very serious illnesses that are taking away their quality of life. Mm. And it, as I say, the most of the people, that are the, the vast majority of people are in that situation. Mm. I remember reading about 10 years ago uh, uh, an Irish writer, uh, I won't say her name now, but um, she was given a terminal diagnosis and she described it in an interview that uh, when she'd been given the diagnosis, she had a year or two to live. She said it was like all the good had been taken out of her life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, it's just it, uh, to die like like that, either painfully or well, painfully, yeah, physically, mentally, yep. painfully. It must be. I I really think it must be terrible. You know. And why why should we subject people mm. to that? Why should we insist mm. that they stay alive when when they've decided? That the life that they're living, as is the you know, the one that you were describing there, the writer. Uh, what, what what right do we have to say to them mm. that you have to endure this year and just wait around until nature takes its course or whatever expression you want to use? Mm. We've no right to do that to anybody else. Mm. Uh, Tom, how strong is the movement against uh, voluntary abortion rights in Ireland and around the world, in your experience? Well, abortion is not something that I... Oh, no, no, sorry. I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I realise you made a mistake. Yeah. There's, there, there's a very strong, I suppose, religious uh, mm. objection to it, in that the people who believe that God gives life, they're, they're their God, whatever God they believe in, mm. and that God, their God is the only person who can take it away. Mm. But not everybody believes that. And, and in most cases, in fact, a poll that was done here some time ago had over 80% of people Mm. In favour of, of of assisted dying for the uh, for the terminally ill. Mm. Oh, I mean that that's a good measure, and that was done quite some time ago. This was long before the abortion or the mm. the, uh, the the other referendum that we had on on mixed on, on <laughs> mixed marriage. I was going to say that mm. goes back a while in Ireland, but but uh, so eighty percent of or over eighty percent of people thought that it should be available to people that they had a right to make that decision themselves. Mm. Uh, you've just said, I have a question. You just have. You think you just addressed it a little bit there already? I r- r- remember reading a book a long time ago, and it's a book I still have. It's by my favourite author, M. Scott Peck, and it's called Denial of the Soul. I don't know if you ever heard of it. But, yes. But 
he, he, while he didn't take a stand in the book, from what I remember on the debate about euthanasia, his book was basically about how most of the Western world ignores, as he sees it, the existence of the human soul, you know? Yeah. Am, am I right in saying that you and your movement don't see the cause of euthanasia, voluntary euthanasia rights in Ireland and around the world as like an anti-spiritual quest or cause or anything like that? Certainly not. I mean, an, an awful lot of the people, as I say, that I come across are very spiritual and some of them very religious as well. The two necessarily don't go hand mm. in hand, mm. but an awful lot of them are very spiritual. And they have the view that if if there is something after this life, mm. then then let's go to it now rather than be waiting mm. and waiting in pain and in discomfort. <laughs> That's what uh, I think you know, as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it, it it's not something that's exclusively for for non-believers. Hmm. Most, as I say, an awful lot of the people that I would be directly involved with uh, are, are believers, and, hmm. and some of them quite religious. Hmm. So, Okay, Tom, I can't I mean, think... For, for instance, so, so, something that, that, that uh, I said in a, in, a, uh, in a debate, in fact, in Cambridge some time ago, is that theoretically, if, if you believe that Christ existed on this world and that Christ, Christ was, was the Son of God and he had all sorts of powers, I mean, Christ allowed himself, mm. allowed people to take his life. Mm. Uh, that, that's assisted suicide. Mm. Mm. Yeah, he could have stopped at any time, or so we're told. Yeah, yeah. So he, wanted, he, he, sa he said that he gave up his life for the sins of the, of the, the people on the earth. Now, if he was giving up his life, that's suicide. Mm. And he, let, he, he allowed other people to... Mm. So isn't that assisted suicide? So mm. there's I mean, one recorded right in the middle of the Catholic Church. Hmm. Uh, I've no other questions, Tom. Is there, is just before you go, is there any other news you want to let our listeners know about? No, no, no. Uh, I, I've I've been relatively quiet hmm. in Ireland for various reasons for the last couple of years, hmm. uh, but but that that is changing now. That because mainly because after the the last referendum, hmm. uh, I've had contact from loads of people hmm. as to why asking why I've gone quiet and why hmm. the movement has gone quiet. So it's, it is certainly our intention, and it coincides with John Halligan now bringing this bill back in. Mm. It'll coincide with that, that we will start uh, campaigning again here. 